are you? I'm nobody, really. I was raised to do one thing. Remote slicing. Nothing will stand in my way. I will finish what I started. There are stories about what happened. It's true. All of it. The imps. The pubs. They're real. is calling to you. Don't be alarmed. 2021 is nearly over, and GSF still exists. Many have forgotten this. Some yet remember the old ways and practice the ancient rituals, but their number fades. New arrivals often seem disoriented. In a strange land with few waypoints to guide the lost, confusion is forgivable. Nobody has yet managed to kill the Q. GSF still exists. In recognition and celebration of this baffling reality, I spoke to a number of players about a few topics that I thought would be of interest to anybody who cares that GSF still exists. best advice I could give someone is to work on not dying. And it doesn't mean run away. It doesn't mean go hide all match. That means pay attention to where you are and what you're doing. Also, focus on aim. Yeah, proton torpedoes are good, but the best players do most of their damage with their primary weapons, and you should too. How about this? Pay attention to when your shields are depleting. That's important too. This goes back to the best players do their damage with primary weapons. You may not hear a missile lock. You shouldn't wait for a missile lock to notice that somebody's shooting at you. We have satellite access. My number one advice that I always give, if you're accurate, your damage is gonna come up. And if your damage comes up, you're gonna do the kills. So, basically, accuracy first, damage, and then you're going to be getting the kills because you're doing so much damage. Working on basic shooting skills. Right. You're not going to get any better if you're just shooting at stuff and you're out of range. And If you bring your accuracy up, your damage is going to come up, and your kills are going to come up, and you're going to be that much happier because you're doing things. I just thought of one other thing I would tell people that would help them out. Join the GSF channel! Yes, the unofficial chat channel for GSF that exists on all servers that you can just type slash CJoinGSF. And it's there. If you have questions or want to ask to group with people, usually somebody will group with you. They're not going to be upset if you're new. In fact, they're probably going to be happier to do it if you're new. 
They might even be new themselves. The best advice I could give them is to find a ship that you really enjoy flying and do your best to master it, upgrade it, find a build that you like that just works for you. And if you really want to be competitive in it, there's a couple different schools of thought, those that are playing like myself. I'm just flying for fun, not for the numbers. You find a ship, any ship, doesn't really matter which one. They can all be good. Just find whatever is fun to fly for you. Work on your build, experiment with it, and then you feel like you've invested a little bit of yourself. A part of you is now in the game. You're flying with that, you're enjoying yourself, and that's how you win. Jump right into the everyman ship in a strike fighter. Learn to fly first and then learn to specialize. Don't kind of segment yourself off into a specialty role. If you jump into a gunship first time, you're going to be a really specialized function within team play. And if you jump in a bomber or a scout even, you're going to kind of be the same. But strike fighters right now are, are really strong across the board because they're so versatile. Overcome the lack of a good training mode by doing your homework with GSF schools a prime example Check out the guides to overcome the how to fly aspect that you don't get in the tutorial that you should Satellite captured I probably played the tutorial and then played the first two games the thing that was the most telling for me was I looked at my accuracy and it was like 6% or something like that. Mm -hmm. And like, I have no idea what's going on in this game. There are people who have like 40-50% accuracy. So I started just like Googling guides. The guides themselves were helpful to help me know what component to choose. But what really helped me the most was actually watching people fly. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, that's what you're doing. Just observing what they were doing and seeing when damage numbers pop up. So you felt that watching actual gameplay videos was a significant learning tool for you? Yep. Definitely for me. I mean, it makes sense because then you can see when people are timing their engine maneuvers and when they might be using their system ability and where they're positioning themselves and how they're getting into or out of trouble. If only there was somewhere on YouTube where you could watch gameplay videos of GSF. If someone started a school where you could do that and just see how to play. Especially for uh, new players and explain everything instead of having them having to figure out what is happening, why is F1 being pressed. It would take some kind of an idiot to make the effort to put together a channel like that though, so don't expect anything like that to happen. Put it bluntly, there are not that many newer pilots who actually bothered to learn anything about the game. So I was interested in knowing, how did you figure it out? Mostly just Googling. I would Google Swator GSF and see what popped up. And, mm -hmm. and then I had to start kind of working from there and find out what I needed specifically to look for to find anything. Sometimes I just found like wikis mm -hmm. um, so just kind of navigating that and figuring out the terminology the game used so I could figure out what I needed to look for stumbling across some of those early guides and videos uh, Draco Liches and Luke kind of stick out in my memory the most what do you think of how the game presents teaching you GSF within the confines of SWOTOR. 
That almost seems like a loaded question because I feel like it doesn't really prepare you at all. It kind of like throws you in the deep end without any floaties and says, have fun. Yeah. So it's uh, their tutorial. I, I don't even see how they get away with, with calling it a tutorial. It's really one of those things that if you want to learn, you've got to be proactive and just go out and find the information. The guides are there. It's just finding them. Were you aware that there is a GSF chat channel on pretty much all servers? Uh, where it exists, but probably only for the last few weeks. Yeah. So as a new pilot, would you have found that to be useful, knowing that there is a chat channel within the game that you could potentially talk to other people who play that part of the game? Probably. I guess it depends on how many people are in the channel and how helpful they're being. Yeah. But I've never checked it out. Maybe it's something I should do. How did you find out about the Discord? Forums, GSF forums for sure. I, I saw I was reading somebody's older guide or something and I mm -hmm. saw a link to it and I think somebody's signature or maybe they just linked it themselves in, in a post. Have you found the Discord to be a useful resource? For sure. It's, it's some of the, the best group of knowledge that you can actually ask people live and get responses. I think the first time I saw Dracolich respond to me, I'm like, oh my god, he's like almost a celebrity and he's talking mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, it's uh, definitely got a good mixture of older players that have been around for a while and the newer ones that show up through whatever means they discover it. Bye now. The best thing you can do is reach out to an experienced player and try to get some mentoring from them over a voice client because although GSF is not all that complex of a game it's not something that anyone starts out good at and you have to learn a bunch of stuff and it really helps to have an experienced person tell you what stuff is important to learn if you have a teacher you can achieve in maybe 10 hours what might take you hundreds of hours if you were just trying by trial and error on your own if there are any new people are going to listen, actually group up. It doesn't matter with who, it doesn't matter if they're skilled, not skilled, if they're ace, if they're new, just group up with them. Yeah. Fly with them. It, it gets so much better if you actually fly in a group in terms of how fast your skills develop. Especially if you're grouping with someone who's actually good at the game, you can ask them questions at any point in the game. It's so valuable. I think the most important thing is actually just to reach out to people and talking to people. Uh, you get to know people, they fly with you. You learn things. I didn't learn how to do certain things until I started grouping with people. Stopping and talking with people will definitely help bridge the gap between new players and the people who've been around the block for a while. And I do think people should group up if they can. It connects with what I said, where people should talk to each other. Grouping up opens up a lot of components which may not have been very effective before but they are effective when you're in a group like a sensor beacon it can be very frustrating if someone is continually dropping a sensor beacon and you actually have people on your team using it there are other things like combat command of course is not exactly a very well loved thing but it's very scary sometimes when i've grouped up with people and they say like, oh my god, this is crazy. I can suddenly hit all these shots I never would be making before. And it lets us use more of the game. Well, there are a lot of components that were designed with teamwork in mind. I do believe grouping up helps humanize a lot of people and it helps people have a lot more fun. There are people I've met and they're, they've pissed me off to no end. You know, shooting me, I'm shooting them, we kill, we kill each other. I get to meet them and they're perfectly fine people and all those opinions I had about their gameplay have just vanished just by spending maybe an hour or two just playing some tough matches with them. People play the game for any number of reasons. So the one thing though, it's going to seem a, a little bit cliche, but have fun 
You need to enjoy it. It's still a game at the end of the day. If you're not having fun, then there's no point. You're just doing it for the rewards or the conquest points. My number one advice for new players, or even other players in this game, would be to find a team and play with it. Um, whether that's like a static team you always play with, or whether it's several people that you just kind of are in a group with. And as long as you're doing this, you're going to enjoy the game more. And that's the other big piece is that you, know, you got to focus on having fun, because there's nothing in GSF that you require for some external purpose. If you get your ships maxed out, it doesn't make you stupendous at GSF, it doesn't give you any benefit in the ground game, it barely even gives you like achievements or whatever. You have to make your own goals for GSF to be fun, uh, and you need to focus on enjoying yourself at it, but I think that playing as a team is the biggest thing, because you have a number of really big benefits in terms of having fun, and also just playing the game the way it's intended, because of course it's always a team game. As, as far as game mechanics go, what would you say is the biggest benefit to grouping? I would say there's an easy thing and a satisfying thing. The easiest thing is concentrating fire. You know, you call a name out or you say someone has no breaks and then like your team gets that person down much faster than they would have. And often they're extended much faster than they can respond. Just from a perspective of winning, that's really, really top. When you have numbers on somebody, the damage becomes totally overwhelming to whatever the defenses of the ship are. That's the easiest piece. The most satisfying piece is probably gonna be if you call for appeal. So if you call for help and one of your friends comes along and targets the guy with a missile or shoots at him, or even destroys him, but usually just pushes him away from you, suddenly that changes what's going on. Suddenly you start contributing to the game uh, offensively again instead of just being a defensive contributor. The third thing would be that group plans are really satisfying when they work. If you and your team have a plan to go take a node or like guard an area of a domination map, you know, even something as, as tactically silly as we're going to full stop this guy or anytime those things happen. Guaranteeing several competent players on your team is a very strong reason to group up. You have eight or 12 people because you can select three of them and that you can work together with those three. It's a pretty big deal. Grouping isn't just good because you win more, although, again, I recommend winning as often as possible. Grouping is good because you're going to have a great time, and the game is meant to be a team game. simple, I would want something that we could spend our requisition. Either fleet, but I'm hoping fleet and ship requisition on some in-game item. Yeah, you're looking for things to enhance your character, but you want to be able to use all the fleet rec and uh, ship rec that you earned. I noticed this when I was logging into a couple of my old characters. I have cargo bays full of requisition ships, dozens upon dozens of them that have no use whatsoever. My primary concern with GSF, it suffers from an incentivization problem. It's a separate game mode that has no incentives for anyone else to join in, other than for Renown. In the past, with various game systems that incentivized people to join GSF to get stuff for non-GSF game modes, it creates some problems. Well, I don't know that people didn't like it so much as they just didn't try to participate in it. Match rewards should be based on medals, not wins or losses. And the medals themselves need some reworking. What would you do to rework medals? Simple. Healing medal needs to be bumped up. The mm -hmm. 2k and 4k are no longer as significant as they once were. The rest should normally be fine, but anything that promotes just being there doing nothing, like the tick bomber situation, yeah, that should be looked at. I think one of the major gripes with current GSF, even after 5.5, is there's a little bit of a disconnect between GSF and the rest of the game. Uh, they've partially bridged that with the loot boxes, but I think they could go a step further. They can add rewards that are unique to GSF. Let's say you got like a token after you have a victory, and that could be used to eventually buy unique stuff. It, it would 
be mostly cosmetic, nothing that really affects any sort of performance in game. Another problem right now is incentivizing people to try and go for a win. There should be more incentivizing for a win just because we've got problems with AFKers. But I don't want to punish people who are trying to learn the game, so they should still get something. Performing well should scale with rewards. I would ask for a much better, clearer, more functional tutorial level. And one that you have to go into before you can queue your first match. So that means it has to have all of those things. Because even when people discover it for the first time, usually when someone tells them it's there, it's not that great. Something that gives you an engaging uh, introduction to the game mode would be fantastic, but it would need all of those things in order to be effective at that. Otherwise, you'll actually get fewer people queuing up for their first GSF match if you force them to go do something that sucks. I would probably go with variable levels of armor piercing. Armor is sort of broken at the moment in that it's either all or nothing, and it kind of works because they've compensated in other areas, but there are a lot of components that were clearly meant to be damage reduction or armor piercing that don't work in the way that the game is really supposed to. More maps would probably be the easiest thing to do the friend and probably could please the most amount of people. I think what everyone would want or be happy with the most is more maps. Mm. I would love at least one more map or a couple different maps, maybe a new mode. What do I want out of GSF the most? I'm actually really happy with the way it is right now. Just more of what's already there. Don't change the ships. The ships are great. There's like 30 something beautiful, wonderful ships and the Enforcer and the Fire Hauler, which are a little, little less beautiful, <laughs> but still, but still fun. I would love new maps and new modes. Maybe one new mode and a couple new maps. Another thing I'd love, the ability to just, you know, get into a map or a match on your own and just fly without waiting for a queue. Fly any ship in uh, the training mode, just fly it around, enjoy. For Denon, there's no TDM opposite of that. Mm -hmm. So something similar to that in a TDM. Of course, a DOM for like IOCath. You know, some opposites for those two, which would be pretty easy for them to do if they were going to do it. Just to add something different. Yeah, I completely agree, actually. that's That would be on the top of my list of things, too, for that exact reason, because they already have the maps there, and they could move a few things around a little bit in the geometry to make it more effective for the DOM or the deathmatch version of it. But yeah, I'm fully on board with that. All the other maps have their DOM and TDM versions, so, you know, why not? I would definitely want to see the stealth ships, because that would... That would arm like they throw the meta out of the window. There's only that much you can fly before you have seen most of the kind of tactics that you can develop. Oh, it would flip the game on its head if those were in. I think someone way back when posted the data mine. Yes. Stats and also like some of the weapons. They uncovered pretty much everything about those ships. When I read them, I'm like, this is this is definitely interesting. The coolest thing, if they were to implement those stealth ships, is that it would fulfill their original design intent, because they obviously made the game with the intention that stealth would be a real mechanic in it. You know, you have all the stuff with sensors and sensor beacons and targeting telemetry stuff, and it's all geared towards making sure you can uncover stealth ships that don't exist. In combination with like some of the component choices, like for example, hyperspace beacon with a stealth, companion might become way more powerful in terms of assaulting an off node or um, trying to capture a second node. I would say that's going to cost way too much dev time that oh, yeah. I don't think Bioware is ever going to sink it. So next on the list would probably be just give us new maps. I would love to see them finish their stealth ships. I know the game has kind of been tuned around the main four classes we do have, but that extra class would be really nice. 
But if you had those stealth ships, you could kind of change a little bit of the rest of the game around it, too. I think the reason that they didn't do them is because they were worried about putting in a bunch of ships where someone can become invisible, which is extraordinarily powerful. But, yeah, you know, kind of adding anything new to GSF would be wonderful. Unless what they add is just awful for the game, I would just love it, so it doesn't really matter much. Whatever they're actually going to add would be wonderful, and I don't know when they're going to add stuff, but that would be good. Iacath Domination, Denon TDM. I think adding a deathmatch to Denon or adding satellites to Iocath for it to make a domination map would be really cool. That's a hit. Think I see body parts. Any last words? We need a Clarion with a pink and purple paint job and a Miss Pac-Man bow. That's what we need. Ooh, add is a good question. I'm not sure... A way for Ion Missile to be useful. I that's, guess. That's the one thing you would pick. I don't know what you could add without having to consider balance is the issue. Now I know what I might change. CC is bad. It's bad for the game. It doesn't add anything. Do something about it. At least hard CC. I mean, I'm not going to argue you about that. I know. <laughs> and I guess the difference is you and I are both primarily solo players, so yeah. CC doesn't add anything to the game for us. It's not worth our time to use it because, well, there are other things that do the same job better. And it really just sucks when we get hit with it because the players that use it on us can't usually kill us, but they keep us from participating, which isn't fun. Yeah, that's always been my main objection to it, is that it really is a just a drain of fun out of the game. Yeah. And okay, fine. So some people do find it fun to immobilize other people. That's a form of fun, I can't argue that. But it's also very dangerously close to griefing. Well, that was my biggest point of contention with it, with remote slicing specifically in the form that it existed prior to the, the miracle patch. That tiny change wasn't enough, but it helped. It definitely wasn't enough, but it did arguably remove its capacity to be a pure griefing tool. It's surprising how consequential it was just to add the necessity for line of sight. Yeah, I still get hit with it sometimes, but I almost never die to it unless I'm badly out of position or it's the one pre-made that still plays. Um, so there are a few players out there that actually know what to do with it, but a lot of them just like hit the button and leave you without stuff and don't follow up. Yeah, and unless you're badly out of position that's not as punishing anymore. So I do appreciate that. Like learning to shoot, that's just such a key fundamental thing and it's not hard and you can still shoot in a stock ship especially in the, the strike fighter i would like to see some changes to the stock scout actually because i oh, do, yeah i do think that it's terrible it is it's bad i don't like to fly it the strike fighter is fine it's still stock so it's not great but it's fine for a stock ship pretty good stock ship it's what the stock experience should be i think yeah Although I would like to see Hydro Spanner on its stock. That's not hard to get on either side. I, I guess they could just have the character with Hydro Spanner. You just change your co-pilot, yeah. Yeah, just make that the default one. Yeah, it's funny because I always forget to swap the crew out. And Me I'm too. Like, I have in my sights on this character. What, is, yep. what does that even do? And then I remember and I immediately switch it. Yeah, they could definitely change the stock ship bar for new players and improve 
the experience of those players. Like if, if a new player just logs in and tries the Strike Fighter, which thankfully is the, the first chip on the bar, you know, so that's the one they're most likely going to use, that will give them as fair a shot as they're going to get. Yeah. I would like to see... I know they won't because it was a subscriber reward or whatever, but type just give gunship. everybody the Type 1 gunship. Yeah. The Type 2 gunship is garbage, and I would like to see it removed from the game, <laughs> but if it's going to be in the game, don't give it to somebody as their first ship, please. I mean, they could make it better. There's a definite niche that uh, the Type 2 gunship could occupy. I mean, I think it can launch Protorps at a longer range. It can. But what's the value in that? Very little. When I first decided to make this video, I had a much different approach in mind. I was upset by the many fixable things that would improve the play experience for everyone and the long years between any updates to the game. I wanted to vent my frustrations. But the more I talked with the pilots who, after eight years, still fill the queue, their enthusiasm for the game and my own nostalgia and appreciation of its design turned my attitude to a more hopeful and constructive flight path. Virtual spaces have a history, population, and shared experience that can be as meaningful as any place in the material world. We are all stewards of this place. And even when the lights go out and the hangar doors are permanently sealed, our actions will have impacted those around us, and our legacy will be more than a title attached to our name. Don't worry if some noob shoots you down. Even if another pilot destroys you, and someone else blows you up, and another guy sets your hull on fire, and you get shot by nothing visible. Even if you lose against unskilled pilots, your hands can still grasp victory. Learn. Practice. Compete. Improve. <laughs>